Here's what we're going to be making today in project two of the Teeth Things Dice Making Kit. Uh, if you don't have the kit, you can follow these projects along, no problem, and just buy your own supplies. Everything will be readily available. Um, it, we're going to be making this nice translucent red die with gold inking as our first dice making project. So we've, in project one, we've cast our uh, cap mould, our two-part mould for our D20. Um, we're going to use that mould now to cast epoxy and red alcohol ink to make a translucent red dye, sort of like a red kind of garnet gemstone feel. Um, so the first things we're going to need is some PPE. So you've got your gloves from your kit and then you're going to need a mask. Now, if you're working inside, I really recommend that you get a, a respirator mask that's rated for fumes and for particles. Um, we don't want to be breathing in epoxy whilst we're mixing it. It's not pleasant. It is hazardous to health. Um, it can have some serious side effects. Um, if you're working outside, loads of ventilation, please still wear a, a disposable mask as well. We're going to need some a set of scales to measure our epoxy. We're going to need the epoxy itself. We're going to need something to mix it in. So we've got a silicon stir uh, mixer cup because this is going to be reusable and a silicon stirrer. I've got my mould. We've got paint and a paintbrush to finish it off and some abrasive papers to get it to the point where it's all nice and shiny at the end. Okay. Okay, so I'm all PP'd up. I'm wearing my mask of dragon breathing. I uh, don't know if you can hear me and my gloves. I'm recording this as a voiceover so that I can still wear my PPE and work safely. Um, I'm going to measure the epoxy out in a two to one ratio of the epoxy versus the hardener. You're going to zero the scales between um, each liquid and beforehand, so you're just measuring the liquid. And I'm aiming for eight grams of epoxy and four grams of hardener to meet that two to one ratio. But if you kind of mess up and you go nine grams or ten grams, go five grams of the other, so you're keeping the correct ratio rather than pouring the exact amount. So when your epoxy and your hardener have been measured out, the next thing you're going to want to do is add your colour. So I'm just using a red alcohol ink here and I'm going to add a drop at a time and then stir that up to check the colour. Of course though, make sure that before you add a drop at a time that you have shaken your alcohol ink to get the pigment diluted into the liquid. And then add your eight drops of alcohol to the desired colour. Try not to add too much because actually alcohol ink can uh, inhibit the cure of your resin and stop it setting properly. So you don't want to add too much, but you can add out a few more drops just to get that depth of colour that you want and keep stirring. But remember, you can't take it out. You can only add more in. While we're waiting, put the lids back on everything, making sure that you put B's lid back on B. I labelled them so that I know. And A's lid back on A. So all I've done is I've just left the resin to settle for 10 to 15 minutes and that's just allowed any bubbles, any air that's been trapped in there whilst I've been stirring to rise up to the surface and burst. When that's done, we're going to add a small amount onto the cap face just to, if there are any more bubbles in there, if they do rise, it's going to stop them sticking around the number one um, and causing indentations. Then I'm going to use the body of the resin to fill up the mould and I'm going to fill it up to the point where there's a dome on the top. So we're slightly overfilling the mould so that it, we, we've basically got extra resin to fill in any gaps. And you can see there that it's all it's raised above the surface of the mould. We're then going to take a cocktail stick and just dislodge any bubbles that have got stuck around the internal numbers on the dice. And we're just going to move those out into the middle so that we can get rid of those. And you can, you can see the bubbles all rising to the surface and collecting together. 
There's two ways of getting rid of these bubbles. Either we can use the cocktail stick to just move them off the side of the mold, um, just move them over, they'll burst, and then we can move the resin back again. Or um, you can use a long lighter just to burst them really quickly. Do be aware though that using a long lighter and the heat on your silicon can make it degrade faster and mean your mold has a shorter shelf life. When you're happy that there's no mold bubbles, we're gonna put the lid on. And when you're putting the lid on, make sure that those keys marry up so the one rounded side in the mold fits the rounded side in the lid. We're going to push down to make sure that's nice and tightly closed, but we're not going to squeeze into the middle, so we're not squeezing the resin out of the dice cavity itself. We're just pushing down on the lid to make sure that's completely closed to, to limit any uh, raised faces that we're going to get later. And when that's all done, we're going to leave it to cure overnight. Pow pow! So... It's the exciting bit, we get to take it from the mould. Just carefully take the lid off. There'll be flashing, which is like the overspill from your dice. And it's come off all nice and neat. We're going to take that flashing off. It might be stuck to that bit, it might be stuck to this bit. And then just gently separate the sides of your dice. From the mold and we're going to put our thumbs in the bottom fingers on the top and just pop it out Ta -da! and there we have project one our first translucent red d20 now this is going to need some tidying up all around the faces where the cap was there'll be some little lines i'm going to sand those up but what we're going to do first is just wait a couple of days just for that to fully cure and harden and at the moment it is hard and it's solid but there'll still be a reaction going on inside there so we're just going to leave that because if we do it too soon the scratches from the paper are going to go really deep into the face of the like the, the surface of the faces and leave it um scratch deeper than we need to and just basically create more work so we're going to put that to one side for a couple of days and then we're going to come back and polish it here's everything we need to finish off that that first dice cast so i've got my cast that i made um, i've got some ppe a mask and gloves uh, as a minimum i've got a thousand grit um sock silicon carbide paper which is which is uh, sandpaper that you can use wet i've got my polishing papers and I've got a small ramekin of water, which yes, goo dessert did come in that. Everyone in the UK has these hanging around their homes. Um, and it needs just needs to be in a container that you aren't gonna use again for, for anything other than resin work. Um, and then I've got my uh, acrylic paint and paintbrush for inking up when I'm finished. So I'm gonna move those to one side. I'm gonna pop my PPE on. Um, and then we're gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our um, silicon carbide paper, this 1000 grit, and we're going to wet that up. So we're going to dip the dice into it, get the paper nice and wet um, before we start. And I'm going to start off with that one face that's got the cat marks on it. Now, none of the other ones need doing, so I'm going to try and do as little as possible to any of the other ones because they're nice and shiny. Um, but this cat face has marks on it. So I'm going to start by just rubbing very gently and I'm just going back and forwards in one direction after I've done a few I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do a few in the other one I'm using as little pressure as I possibly can whilst I do this and just rotating a little bit each time and doing eight more strokes and that should be enough just to have taken the surface off it now I've still got those cap marks there and you, every time you do a process you're just going to check it again afterwards to make sure it's how, how it's coming along. So I'm going to try and get those cap marks there. So I've got the 7, the 19 and the 6, the, the 9 face sorry, next to my 1. So I'm just going to give those a go as well. So I'm just going to hold my dice and just try and really gently polish those three faces as well in the direction of towards the one face. So I'm just polishing that one edge and sort of concentrating it towards the one face. Again, there's no pressure whatsoever. It's just the weight of the dice that's moving across the papers. 
but I'm reshaping those bumpy bits, the extra bits, and taking those off where it is. And now I haven't got any ridges around the edge at all. But what I am left with is a slight, very, very slight raised face. Now, if you've got a really raised face, you're not going to be able to polish that away because you'll lose the one. But if it's just a very small amount, go back to that one surface and just do a couple of strokes on each side. Oh, squeaky dice. Just until clean it off. Those corners fall back into line, just a really small amount of sanding. And there we have it. So we've made the dice the right shape now. And all we've got left to do is to polish that so that it's shiny again. I'm going to swap out now. I've swapped out that silicon carbide paper for our six colours of polishing papers. Ooh, not the camera. <laughs> I'm going to line those up in order of roughest down to, to smoothest. So the polishing papers are 30 microns, 15 microns, 9 microns, 3, 2 and 1. And the, the higher the number, the rougher the paper, whereas with the silicon carbide papers it's the opposite way around. The higher the number, the smoother the paper. Um, just remember that one. So we're starting on our 30 and again we're just going to get all those papers nice and wet before we start polishing. The water's going to help to catch any um, any dust that flies through the air. It also makes it much smoother when we're, when we're polishing. So I'm going to start on my 19 face, the one next to the one. I'm going to do a few circles on my roughest paper. just to take away those marks from leftover sandpaper. Then I'm going to go to number to number two, which is 15 microns. Do a few circles in one direction. Do a few circles in another direction. Do a few lines in one direction. Rotate it and do a few lines in another direction. I'm going to repeat that process. Circles one direction, circles the other direction, lines one direction and lines the other across all of the papers. Um, the reason that I do different patterns of movement is because it's going to help give you less uniform polishing marks on your finished product, which is going to make it look shinier more quickly. So you're basically putting in less effort because we're not repeating the same marks on each with each movement. We're not digging those marks any deeper. Okay, I've just dried it off, so you can see that the, the one face, the seven face and the nine face are all scuffed up from that uh, thousand grit sandpaper. Um, but the 19 face that we've just polished is now as shiny as all the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead, ahead and repeat that six stage process on the other three sides that need polishing. And there we have it. One nice and shiny dice with no cut marks. When that's nice and dry, we're going to paint in the numbers. The last and final step of making our dice is to colour in the numbers or ink them. Um, so we're going to do that with a little, uh, this is just gold acrylic paint a paintbrush and our dice. It's the only step of the process that you don't need PPE for. It's okay to sit in front of the television and get on with um, or to do 
whilst everyone else is taking too long in combat. Um, we're just going to take a really small amount. I'm going to pick a number. And I'm just putting that paint all into the number. Now, I'm not trying to fill the number. What I'm trying to do is paint the bottom and all the sides of that number. And you'll see that I've got paint absolutely everywhere. But once I've done that, I can just wipe off the surface. And there we go. There's a painted number. I'm going to do that for every single one. Just going in there. Filling it in, getting all round. Filling in the numbers and wiping the excess away. And that's all it takes. I'll crack on with the rest of them. And there we go, our first finished dice. Rollable, shiny, red, gold numbers, ready to go. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get told every time a new video drops. And uh, I've been Fran, this is Teach Things. Thank you very much for watching.